cataractcoach.com. With this traumatic cataract, what's the best approach? So let's start off making the paracentesis. As you fill the eye with anesthetic, look carefully. Does the lens move at all? Is there any laxity there in the zine or support? It looks okay. Now let's go on with our viscoelastic or dispersive here and fill up the eye. And this area right there, is that the lens equator or is that a cortical ring? So, so far it looks okay. There's no vitreous in the anterior chamber. It looks like the zona support's pretty good. Let's make the main incision. You know, this patient had an injury from a bungee cord, which is like an elastic band that was quite forceful. And it hit his eye 40 years ago. And he didn't seek any treatment until recently when he got these central cortical spokes that are causing his vision to decline. Let's start our rexus. Let's go over this part where we can actually see it, where the capsule is normal. Now notice there's no wrinkling in the capsule, so it looks like there's pretty good support. Now when I come to this area, I want to encompass that white fibrous plaque. And also, don't let go of the capsule in the area where you can't see it. So keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There, we encompass that fibrous plaque, and I have the capsule where I can see it, and now we can finish. Very important to encompass that fibrous plaque. You see, we've peeled it right off. It's stuck to the anterior lens capsule. Now, in hydrodissection, be very careful. Watch how the fluid waves go. Make sure there's no damage to the lens equator or lens posterior aspect, posterior capsule. So far, it looks pretty good. I want to get this nucleus out of the capsule bag completely. It's not really dense. I want it up and out of the bag. And the reason is I don't want to put any stress on the area of potentially bad zonules. If there's a posterior capsule defect, I want this lens away from it. So we'll also inject viscoelastic underneath it. Get that lens up. Now we have the whole lens in the anterior chamber. Recoat the central endothelium with our dispersive viscoelastic. That's using Viscoat. We'll go inside here with the phaco probe and just take our time, buzz into this thing, try to break it up into pieces, emulsify it. I don't want to be in the capsule bag here. So again, it's not a very dense nucleus. I'm just going to show you the video unedited so you can just get the full feeling. So the whole case here is unedited today. So buzzing in the phaco probe into the nucleus. Not a lot of chopping going on here. It's just not a dense nucleus. We should be able to just emulsify it using the chopper to keep the whole nucleus in front of the probe and just keep occluding on it, keeping those pieces in front. Now, the wider, more opaque areas of the lens do have some density, do require some phaco energy. The rest of the lens is pretty soft. All looks pretty good so far. I'm also looking at the posterior capsule. It looks like it's intact. Looks like we may get lucky in this case. So let's take down the last nuclear piece here. Chopper's in a protective mode. Again, we haven't seen the lens capsule bag equator, which is a good sign. So we got out uh, the nucleus, maybe a couple of chunks left. We'll get those out later. Just wiping away a little mucus with the sponge. And now let's do the cortex removal. Here we have to be very gentle. So let's take out this little nuclear piece here or epinuclear shell. We'll wolf that down. So remember the beginning case where the area of the traumatic cataract was. So as we remove the lens cortex, we could do that area, but now nah, let's do away from that area first. Let's go over here instead. So we'll do all of the cortex removal in the normal areas, the areas where, we were, where there's no trauma. Nice and easy, taking that down, taking our time here. And removing this again so far so good very stable everything looks normal i don't have any vitreous prolapsing around the lens equator i don't even see any broken zonules all looks pretty good now for the second half of this cortex removal we're gonna split this into a bimanual approach the right hand is just the infusion the left hand now is the aspiration so we'll just adjust that tip to the way we like it there we go put that inside the eye and to be very gentle here so as I'm doing this, what am I watching? Of course, the cortex, but I'm also keeping an eye out for the, the capsular rexus. I want to make sure the rexus does not move. If our capsular rexus is being moved, or if I can see the lens bag equator, 
that's a bad sign. But luckily, none of that happened. So even if I pull in that one area where the trauma was, look carefully, there is no movement of the capsular axis, and we don't see the lens equator, the capsular bag equator. Those are great signs. So it looks pretty good. I have not noticed any instability here. So that looks pretty good. We're going to fill our capsular bag, put our lens inside the bag. Now, what are the options for the lenses? You could put a three-piece lens in. Maybe if they're bad zonas, you could have some more options for suturing it later. You could put a capsular tension ring if you thought there was some traumatic zon or loss, but I don't think there really is. So I think this patient will actually do really well with a single piece acrylic lens. There's one little piece of nucleus you can see we have left there, one chunk. We'll get that out. So that looks good. Nice rexes. Again, it stays round. No issues here. Let's get the lens inside the capsule bag. Again, there really is no zion or weakness here. We'll go ahead and put the lens in, and it'll go just fine. Now, this patient had this trauma. His only side effect from this was the pupil was just a little irregular in, uh, in normal settings. So in the clinic on his appointments, his pupil was slightly ovoid and otherwise functioned normally. He had normal pupillary function. It constricted appropriately. So there's no need to even mess with that. We're just going to do our cataract surgery and uh, leave the iris alone. There's the lens. Looks beautiful in the capsule bag. Notice how we did, just in case, put the haptic in the area of the traumatic cataract. And that's just in case there is any uh, future zion or weakness there. That can, haptic will act as a strut. But I think this patient's going to do great, and I don't think there'll be any future issues. And uh, there's that last little piece of nucleus we saw earlier. We'll just bring that here to the eye port, use our spatula to just mush that into the port and, and aspirate it. So this patient did beautifully. Everything went great. Surprise, surprise. And uh, he was absolutely thrilled with the outcome. And the funny part, he said, after surgery, he said, gosh, I don't know why I waited so many years to get have the surgery done. He says, I suffered with that cataract for the last 40 years. I just wish I had come in earlier and sought medical advice. So tell your friends, tell your neighbors, if you do sustain eye trauma, you need to see an ophthalmologist. Don't wait 40 years like this patient. Anyway, let's finish our case here, sealing up our incisions. Everything looks beautiful. So we got very lucky here. The patient got lucky. Traumatic cataract, but the rest of the eye was normal. We learned some important lessons, getting that rexus around the fibrotic area of the capsule. And we'll finish this case up. Thank you for watching, and I do trust that you've learned some valuable lessons from this case.